What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin Svensson. Today is Monday, August 5th, and we had a really, really rough start to the week. Bitcoin on the left, the S&P 500 on the right, and we have seen tremendous downside in both markets. As you probably know, the Japanese stock market saw a major collapse, and this sent shockwaves through global markets. What's pretty obvious is that global markets have had a major impact on Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. Whenever there's major fear in the global markets, that fear becomes contagious and it bleeds into Bitcoin and the altcoins. Now, this chart looks pretty bad, right? It looks terrible, the recent price action that we've seen. But if you zoom out and you take a look at Bitcoin on the weekly, going back to 2023, every time we had a resistance, we flipped it into new support. Today, we have actually touched the previous resistance from the Bitcoin ETF approval. That was the weekly high wick, 49,000, and we tapped it again. This price action is technically still constructive from a macro perspective. Most people are not gonna wanna hear that. Most people are just gonna want me to come on here and tell them that it's all over, we're going to zero. Bitcoin is going to zero. But I see something a little bit different in the charts. Looking at the Bitcoin monthly chart, we do have a uptrend line and we are actually elevated off of that uptrend line. Interesting. Ethereum also has an upward sloping trend line on the weekly, a macro uptrend. And Ethereum has retested the 2023 resistance as new support. That price zone was right in the crosshairs of multiple things and the market very swiftly came down. I mean, this was you know, this was a nasty correction. There's nothing nothing else you can say. A lot of people were shocked by Ethereum's price action, but it is still constructive. It would be destructive if we broke the trend line and we didn't hold previous resistance as new support. That would be destruction of the trend. Now, I can only imagine what people are gonna comment below right now. They're gonna say, Kev, this is BS. This is not constructive. How could you say that? My portfolio is down. Well, yes, I mean, Ethereum has given up all of the gains since the beginning of 2024. So obviously it's not great. Nobody is enjoying this price action. But one exercise that I like to do is look at these charts as if you didn't know what the name of the asset was and you didn't even know what the time frame was. I mean, what if this was a one hour chart? Well, you'd be looking at an ascending triangle, a breakout, a retest of the breakout zone. Looks like a good entry area. Look at uh, Bitcoin here, you can see, well, it seems like we're kind of just stair stepping up, imagining that it was a one hour chart of an asset you didn't know. It's a good thought experiment. It's a good mental exercise. And if you were to look at Bitcoin on the yearly chart, it looks like it just keeps going up, keeps hitting new all time highs. We get one red yearly yearly at a time and then multiple green yearlies having event massive green candle one year pullback three candles up having event one year down so far two right we have six months left on this candle is it going to be one two three one two three one two three well who knows but that is what we consistently see for bitcoin moving in through these cycles looking at the weekly in 2017 bitcoin saw seven 40 percent corrections on its way from 200 to 20,000. And right now we are seeing a 30% correction. It's a little bit longer, more drawn out than it was in 2017 because the market cap is a lot higher. Can't move the price as easily anymore. A 30% correction amidst a major macro uptrend is not abnormal at all. It's not comfortable, it's not fun, but it's not abnormal. Now, the altcoin market cap is what I think most people are feeling. Because if you go on social media right now, there is an absolute panic for what seems like Bitcoin. But Bitcoin's trading at 53,000 and the halving just happened. In my opinion, Bitcoin is still doing just fine, right? I mean, it could be better. It's not the worst case scenario, not even close. The altcoins is what's causing all of that negative sentiment that you're seeing. Many of the low caps are down 60, 70, 80, even 90% already right now. So the altcoins are really creating the devastating feeling or the devastating sentiment that you're seeing on social media. It's not Bitcoin. Now you can see that I've mapped out the previous uh, cycle and sort of just showing each phase and comparing it to the new cycle right here that we're in. And we are in theory in the consolidation zone, top, lower high, accumulation, break resistance, consolidate, run up, top, lower high, accumulation, break resistance, consolidate, run up eventually. Now, people are gonna say, Kev, how could you say it? How dare you say that we're gonna run up? You know, how dare you be bullish right now when the market is down? Uh, guys, 
the say the saying goes buy when there's blood on the streets be greedy when others are fearful but somehow everybody forgets this for people just their emotions take over and every time the market comes down heavily and they say, you know, if Bitcoin goes below 50, I'm going to buy. But when it happens, they don't buy. You know, their favorite altcoin is way below where they said they would buy, but they're still not buying. Well, I mean, that is why most people don't succeed. And this is crypto. It's insane. It's absolutely wild. It's going to make your head spin. It will beat you to your knees if you let it. But anyway, you know, on this channel, I almost never go lower than the daily chart. I'm always looking at daily, weekly, monthly today yearly even. And so when I'm looking at these higher time frames, I don't necessarily see anything wrong with it just yet. Though for Bitcoin, 49,000 was that previous resistance from the ETF approval slash rejection candle. And that is exactly where we bounced today along an uptrend. And if Bitcoin was unable to hold previous resistance as new support and we fell below this trend line, this trajectory, well then it would be much more destructive and that would probably lead to a much, much further dip. You bring out your fibs from low to high Bitcoin. If we broke the trend line yeah i mean that's when i would see bitcoin ripping down to maybe 37 and a half thousand i would like to see bitcoin's monthly close above 59,000 or just around 59,000 the 2021 resistance where we had candle closes taking place around this zone if the monthly was able to make it back up to 59,000 and close here that would be another major wick and likely signaling a lot of demand below the 60,000 level. So 59,000 is where I want this monthly to close and it's only August 5th, so there is quite a bit of time for a lot of things to change. Remember the weekly chart? It's Monday, so there's a lot of time for this to change. We could see this as a bullish hammer candle for all we know. If this weekly closed inside of that red box above 59,000, that would be a bullish hammer on the weekly. That's what I would like to see. So getting the weekly and the monthly back up above 59,000 is really the main concern that I have right now. And if we do do that, we would probably stabilize in this zone, maybe test down again, but ultimately looking for continuation in this cycle. Now, there's also something else to say about what's going on globally. It's wartime. Uh, these are wartime charts that you're looking at right now. It's been a long time since we've seen wartime charts. Also going back to, of course, Afghanistan, Iraq. I mean, very, very choppy zone. It wasn't just about the war. It was a lot of economic issues, obviously. And if you just go back in time, one of the more interesting ones is the Vietnam War. Insane chop of epic proportions. So wartime charts are often choppy. It doesn't mean that you can't go up. It doesn't mean that you're just going to go down either. It's usually violent sideways. A lot of people in my generation are used to seeing zero rates and just straight lines up. But right now, I don't think we're, that's where we are anymore, guys. We're not in Kansas anymore. As you just saw, the way that those wartime charts play out is they kind of just make your head spin. They don't just go straight up or straight down. It's like a lower high for the S&P a lower low, a higher high, a lower low. I mean, stuff that is just not even gonna make sense. This is what wartime looks like for the stock market. Now, of course, Larry Fink recently said that Bitcoin is a bet against optimism. Now, historically, that is not true. But if the big guys, the fat cats with all the money decide that that is the narrative for Bitcoin and that is what they're gonna use Bitcoin for, well, Bitcoin may benefit off of uncertainty if they do in fact treat it and regard Bitcoin as a bet against optimism. And hopefully Bitcoin can do well, whether the times are uncertain or certain, whether people wanna have a safe haven or just speculate, that is to be seen. But again, going back to what I was saying, weekly, previous resistance, new support, uptrend, Ethereum, previous resistance, new support, uptrend, the macro, the macro, the macro. I'm not talking about four hour charts. I don't even look at them, right? I don't even, on this channel, we don't look at lower time frames. I'm just looking at the higher time frames, weekly, daily, monthly. So I think that the market is gonna stabilize in this zone and we might see a lot of recoveries in the altcoin market. Most of them are totally oversold and don't deserve to be valued that low at this point, to be quite honest. I think a lot of things are gonna start to bounce back heavily. And I'll keep you guys updated. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.